Telomeres are, are simply the ends of chromosomes, and the molecular structure is a very specific uh, DNA sequence which is sheathed by a group of protective proteins, all of which have been well-defined at the molecular level. And the uh, repeated DNA sequences, normally we're born with about 10 kilobases at the ends on average of our chromosomes, but that can dwindle down to about half on average as we go through aging. That dwindling down means that a fraction of telomere is no longer function. Telomere length is inherited to a fairly large degree, but we don't know how much of that is genetic and how much is simply the telomeric DNA itself carried through on the chromosomes through the parental gametes. So we do know that then there are many non-genetic influences on telomere length which show both dose dependency and severity dependency in how much they wear telomeres down during life. So what we know is at the cellular level, if the telomeres wear down too much, then they no longer protect the ends of chromosomes and that can lead to chromosome instabilities and hence has a role in cancer etiology because of chromosome in instabilities. Very importantly though, when the telomeres get too short, a normal cell will set up a response. Sometimes it will go into a senescent state, sometimes it will die, and sometimes it will have a transcriptional program change that makes it more pro-inflammatory. And so it can have effects where cells no longer regenerate themselves, but also have adverse effects systemically because of the pro-inflammatory factors. There's probably more hundreds of molecular mechanisms than you can ever imagine because every mechanism one has looked at affects both the wearing down and in addition the ability of the telomeres to be regenerated by the enzyme telomerase which we discovered can add back telomeric DNA to chromosome ends. But in humans that typically doesn't keep up with the wearing down in our somatic tissues although it seems to be able to regenerate from one generation to another in the normal range of telomere lengths. However, what we do know is that the non-genetic effects include many malleable effects and in particular chronic psychological stress, which of course we know the brain has clear physiological readouts when it's under chronic stress, such as dysregulation of cortisol. That has major effects. Um, we, we find chronic stress has major quantifiable effects on accelerating the wearing down of telomeres throughout the body, but usually measured in blood cells. That in turn clearly increases risks of common diseases of aging. They include cardiovascular and some cancers. Cancers are more complicated because some cancers are actually spurred on by having better telomere maintenance determined genetically. These are weak but discernible effects. So the converse of stress, if you will, is um, if one has exercise and social support, one sees that that is, um, you know, ameliorates the, the sort of average wearing down. One also sees um, some effects uh, that can now be pinned down to certain dietary effects. And so in large studies, um, omega-3 measured amounts of DHA and EPA in, in people predicts less telomere um, wearing down in longitudinal studies. That in turn has been related to cardiovascular disease um, uh, effects as well as mortality from uh, cardiovascular and other causes. So we see telomere length is, strat is statistically a predictor of all-cause mortality and a predictor of overall cancer's uh, risks. But within the groups of cancers, of course the cancers are hundreds of diseases, there are differences where there are some cancers which are adversely affected by having, um, that is, risks go up when the telomere shortening is uh, greatest, particularly clear in Mendelian diseases of telomere genes that are mutated and haploinsufficiency leads to very accelerated telomere shortening and very greatly increased risks of cancers for certain subsets of cancers. 
Yes, but they're everything your mother told you. <laughs> so get a good night's sleep, have a good attitude, get good exercise and uh, you know, even moderate exercise. Um, cope with stress if you can possibly do it. And um, some dietary, we've certainly seen, we meaning large cohort studies, effects that are related to, for example, the Mediterranean diet versus processed foods, clear effects of smoking in dose-dependent fashion based on history, clear effects of alcohol consumption, and um, clear effects of uh, sugared sodas in dose-dependent fashion. Exercise turns out the more categories of exercise one does, the longer one's telomeres are. This is in very large population studies. So one sees essentially, it's, it's essentially everything your mother told you, but probably don't take quack medicine that purports to increase telomerase because there's good biological reasons and good cancer um, genetic reasons that argue that that could push one into higher risks for certain cancers. I can't give you really good numbers as to the relative um, contribution of the risks, but they all go in the same directions. And I think the very interesting challenge is to understand what fraction of the risk, which is clearly caused by things by tobacco, smoking, lack of exercise, and um, uh, you know, other factors. And we don't know much about stress factors in um, cancer etiology, but those effects of stress on telomeres are somewhat comparable in magnitude to the effects of these other well-known cancer risk factors. And I'd very much like to know if that is a role uh, that may be played in cancer etiology or not. It's simply not known at the moment, but now there's a strong pointer that one should at least look based on this particular biomarker. Yes, if you're prepared to risk cancers. And we do not know in which cell types and so forth the increased action of telomerase, which has been shown genetically to increase risks for melanomas, gliomas, and non-smoker lung cancers. Small changes genetically that increase telomere uh, maintenance increase those risks. So we don't know which tissue types that's critical in. So the bottom line is I would strongly advise against taking any pill that purports on the internet to push your telomere maintenance up because the biological long-term effects of this on cancer risks are simply unknown, but there's very good biological reason to think that that might push one into you know, statistical risks. So, um, however, there's very good guidance from all of the other factors that telomere measures can give you a kind of quantifiable readout into some of these interventions that one would look at, such as exercise, dietary interventions, and uh, even, even perhaps looking at um, how you know, coping with stress could be um, useful in terms of certainly other disease relationships and potentially in cancers. We just don't know. Telomerase is one factor that can elongate telomeres. It's uh, action on telomeres. Uh, if, if you're in the clinically important um, zone where you have haploinsufficiency for telomerase, that 50% level of telomerase compared with the normal 100% is extremely drastic and you get a clear set of diseases, including very high incidence of some cancers. However, in the middle zone of telomere, length, telomere maintenance and telomerase, it's one of hundreds of factors that molecularly control telomere length. So it's not a simple relationship um, in the normal range, although there's generally a positive effect of higher telomerase basally level, basal level um, and telomere length, but, but that is... Um, it's not necessarily simple. It's a very highly controlled maintenance system. For telomere maintenance, what we found is that all of the health practices that are very simple kinds of practices that you know are traditionally one's mother tells one to do, exercise, get a good night's sleep, you know, stress reduction, eat sensibly and so forth, don't do too, too many diet sodas and do not smoke or have excessive alcohol, all of those quantifiably in dose-dependent ways relate to um, adverse effect on telomere maintenance. So uh, some of those will play into cancer prevention modes, but they probably interact with a lot of other factors 
as well. And that's where there's a lot to be learned in the interactions.